If you wear a smartwatch to track your workouts, you're probably used to glancing down at your wrist and taking a look at that calorie burn number. But what if that number wasn't accurate? Researchers at Stanford University have come up with a new wearable design that they say more accurately reflects overall energy expenditure and calorie burn. So that just means there's one thing left to do. I am gonna go check it out and do a couple of workouts to see how accurate this really is. There are plenty of reasons why people want to track calorie burn, but a big one is helping to manage your weight. This is Patrick Slade, a graduate student at Stanford. He's showing me his new wearable with two sensors worn on the upper and lower part of the leg. Where most of your energy is used during exercises like walking, running, stair climbing and cycling. Okay, so tell me why traditional smartwatches and wearables that we wear on our wrist aren't necessarily as accurate as something that's measuring from our lower body. Yeah, people are often really confused when I tell them that smartwatches have 40 to 80 percent error, which can be a lot. And so the challenge is if you use heart rate, it's actually not directly related to the energy that you're expending. So if your muscles are burning that energy, um, your heart rate is just pumping blood through your body and it uh, has a bunch of different factors which affect it, like how tired you are, if you had coffee, um, if you worked out previously, so this kind of time history makes it really volatile. So we're using just the actual leg motion and from that kind of extracting what the muscles are doing. Most wearables worn on the wrist calculate calorie burn by starting with four pieces of information. Your height, weight, age and gender. This determines your basal metabolic rate or the number of calories you need to maintain vital functions at rest. During activity or a workout, it also uses sensors like heart rate, GPS, the accelerometer or the gyroscope, depending on the exercise you're doing, to help determine calorie credit. Add these two numbers together and your watch gives you total calories burned in a day. It's an estimate, as many other factors go into how many calories you actually burn. To test Patrick's claim, I climbed into the most scientifically accurate system to measure energy expenditure in the lab. So this is the respirometry system, which is mobile, so you'll wear this like a backpack and this mask, um, you'll have it on your face, and so it'll capture every breath that you take and we'll be able to compute sort of your crown truth energy expenditure that way. And then we have our lab smartwatch here, and so this will have you put on and punch in some information like your height and your weight, uh, and then that will give you estimates through its app. And then we have our system, and it consists of a couple components. So here's our microcontroller battery and the two IMUs, so you'll wear it like a waist pack, and then we'll put these on your legs. How's that feel? Yes. Good. If okay. only I had this throughout the whole pandemic, it would have felt much cooler. Patrick's system also needs vitals like weight and age to make its calorie calculations. And before I start working out, we take a baseline reading from the respirometer, then I'm good to go. Okay, I'm gonna do a nice leisurely five minute walk on the treadmill. So let's start, Patrick. I'm ready when you are. All right, let's do it. All right. It doesn't feel that hard to wear or anything. I think the real test will be when I'm running. Go ahead and climb up. All right. All right. Okay. Whew. Awesome. Yeah. I take a, a minute. You yeah. can take the mask off if you want and get a drink. Get a water. breather. Yeah, get a little water. Okay, we're outside. I'm going to do a five minute run, more likely a five minute slow jog because I'm not going to be setting any records with my pace. <laughs> Fortunately, pace doesn't matter. It's all just about measuring my energy expenditure. All right. Go ahead and stop. If only you could like hear how deep and heavy my breathing was. <laughs> I mean, you probably can. Very Darth Vader. So I'm going to target about 80 RPM. Let's see. 
There you go. All right, and you can go ahead and stop. So I'm so excited to see these results. Can we have a look at the data and tell us what um, the respirometry device was giving us and then also um, your device and then compare that to the smartwatch, what the differences there? Yeah, definitely. So for running specifically, so the respirometry, the ground truth, had an estimated 87 calories mm -hmm. burned. Um, my device was a little bit lower, 66. And then the smartwatch was 52. Wow, so it was significantly lower yeah. on the smartwatch. Yeah. I was not expecting that. I was honestly expecting to see the watch to overestimate my calorie burn instead. Um, so that was the running. What about the other activities? Yeah, let's look at stair climbing. So stair climbing, it said that you burned uh, 135 calories with the respirometry. Mm -hmm. um, my system said 110 calories. And then it looked like the smartwatch said 67 calories. Whoa! And as a percentage of, of error, what's what's that? That's 62%. Huge. 62%? Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. I was not expecting such a huge difference. On average across all the exercises, the leg wearable had a 14% error rate, while the smartwatch was a staggering 58%. And just because the watch was underestimating for me, it could overestimate for someone else. This means you can't scale the watch's calorie burn estimate up or down by a fixed amount to make it work for everyone. While Patrick's system is way more accurate, it's only a proof of concept, but he's already thinking about ways to improve its accuracy for both upper and lower body movement. And we're starting to think now in terms of research, how do we build a system which can cover a whole body energy expenditure or maybe piece together things. So if you're playing a sport where you're using your arms and your legs, can you sort of separate those two elements, figure out how much is being contributed from both parts and then tell the person in total how much they're burning. He's also working on a smaller version that could be integrated into something like smart clothes. So your workout leggings or top become your fitness tracker. To speed up its development, he's also released a full guide on how to build your own version. In the future, we could be looking at different kinds of wearables all over the body. So it's not time to throw away your fitness tracker just yet. They're the best tools we've got right now, and they do a lot more than just calculate calorie burn, like track your heart rate, help you train for a marathon, and perhaps most importantly, motivate you to move more. So there you have it. The future of wearables might not necessarily be on your wrist, but maybe they will be in your clothes. Thank you so much for watching. There is a list of very helpful links for you in the description below to lots more details about everything we talked about today. Now I am going to go and get myself that very well-earned slice of pizza, but I'm going to jog there because it turns out I actually end up burning more calories than my watch tells me. See ya! How's that? Uh, okay, let's stop the workout. Oh. Guess he didn't hit record properly. Oh no. Ah. Okay. Take a minute. Yeah, I'll take a minute.